In this video, I'll show you how to humanize MIDI synthesized or sampled drums so they sound realistic. It works with any drum sample you have because we're going to add small variations in loudness, pitch, duration, equalization, attack, timing, and it's all going to be controlled by MIDI velocity. Here's an example of a drum loop I made applying this automation. And this is the same drum loop, but without the technique you're about to learn in this video. Did you notice how robotic it sounds? It's difficult to come up with an interesting groove if every hit sounds the same, right? By the way, I'm Thales, pop music producer, and I spent a long time creating and tweaking these racks to automate this. And today you're going to download it for free because I believe it's really going to help make your drums come alive. This technique works wonders for kicks, snares, hi-hats, tom drums, cymbals, and percussions. In fact, I've made a different rack for each one of them. The download link is in the description below, but don't just download it and leave the video. You need to understand how to use it. And the idea behind this is simple. When a real drummer plays, if they hit the snare harder, it's not only going to sound louder, higher in pitch and brighter, but it also lasts longer and it has a stronger transient than when they hit the snare softly. The same is true for the other drums. So I took this incredible device that comes with Max for Life, it's called Envelope MIDI, and I mapped some parameters from multiple Ableton Live's effects and I'll show you one by one. Now I'm not even sure if they came up with this device for this purpose, but I was playing with it and it turned out to do exactly what I needed. This can also be done with the expression control device, but I've tested it extensively and it had more latency. Also, if you're in a different DAW, you can still follow this tutorial. Just look for a device that allows you to use MIDI velocity to control parameters from the audio effects. All right, let's take a look at my kick rack. To start the chain, there's this envelope MIDI at full sustain, no attack and no release and this velocity button turned on. By clicking on this icon on the top right, you'll see what's mapped to this control. You can even map more stuff. The first thing I mapped was the gain from a utility effect, which is my favorite for volume automation. That way I can use MIDI velocity to control volume no matter what device I'm using to trigger the kick. In this case, it's a sampler, but it could be serum or any synthesizer. So higher velocity, louder hits. The next perimeter that's mapped here is the attack in the sampler. When the velocity is at the maximum, the attack is set to zero. So the kick hits hard with the full transient. And when the velocity is lower than the maximum, this thing increases the attack in the sampler. So the kick takes a few milliseconds to hit its peak and the transients are softened. This makes a lot of difference. The next perimeter controls an equalizer and I have this high shelf at 800 hertz. When the kick hits at full velocity, nothing happens, but when it hits at lower velocities, there's a cut in the high mid and high frequencies. It sounds less bright, a bit duller, like a real kick drum when you hit it lightly. And the last perimeter in the kick rack is controlling the frequency shifter. It's my favorite way to manipulate the pitch of drums without making them flabby. I've done a full video about drum tuning and it's on the cards if you're interested. You could use the MIDI tab in your sampler to link velocity to pitch, but I don't like how that sounds for drums. I think the frequency shifter sounds better. So when the velocity is at the maximum, the kick has the highest pitch. As you play with less velocity, the kicks pitch down a little bit. Up to 4 hertz, and that seems to be the sweet spot for kicks. 4 hertz is a lot in the sub-frequency realm. But as you're going to see in the other racks, like hi-hats, the values are going to be entirely different on each parameter. And the last thing I want to show you in the kick rack is this delay plugin that I've inserted here just to fix a latency issue. If you notice that this automation is not reacting fast enough to your velocity changes, that's because of a latency problem. You can solve that by lowering your buffer size in the configuration menu, but sometimes I need to use a higher buffer size when I have lots of plugins in my projects. So this delay plugin solved the problem. I delayed the whole track by five milliseconds and that was enough for me. You may need a lower or higher value. And if that kills your groove, you can use the track delay feature to compensate for that. Just click this D icon to display the track delays and add negative five milliseconds to your drum track and this will put it back in the right timing. Hey, are you enjoying this video? 
if you are, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss the next ones. All right, the tom rack is almost the same as the kick, but I've increased the range of the frequency shifting a little bit and the high shelf EQ starts at 1.2 kilohertz. And here's the hi-hat rack. Everything's pretty much the same except we're controlling the decay so that the stronger hits last longer than the soft ones. You may need to adjust this to fit the original duration of your sample. And the frequency shifting is much higher, about 200 Hz variation because high frequency instruments like the hi-hat require higher values to be noticeable. The EQ curve also starts on a much higher frequency at 8 kHz. And notice that I'm randomizing the panning just a bit to add some movement. That's not gonna make it more realistic because no drummer will move the hi-hat as they play. But it's fun, you should try it. The snare rack is very similar with just a few tweaks on these numbers and the EQ band that starts at 2.5 kHz. The cymbals rack is a bit different. We're controlling the peak value from the sampler and there's an extra low shelf. I'm leaving a soft clipper on every rack just for convenience. And besides the velocity, another thing you should use to humanize your drums is the timing of each hit. Make sure they're not all perfectly quantized to the grid and with the same duration. A drummer rushes and drags and swings and that feels natural, so take advantage of that. You can finger drum and not quantize it or you can just move the notes around freely. Now this is easy to overdo, so be careful or else you may end up with a groove that sounds too sloppy. Unless you're doing that with intention, then anything is valid. Another thing that can help you with timing is the groove pool. You can select one of these pre-made grooves that come with Ableton Live's core library and apply it to your MIDI clips and mess with the timing and random parameters. And as a final touch, if your drums still don't sound realistic enough, maybe it's because they sound too dry. I feel that a lot when I synthesize drums, but nothing sounds entirely dry in real life, right? You always hear reflections, sounds bounce back at your ears. To fix that, add a bit of reverb, that will place everything in the same space. And if you're very serious about staying true to how a real drummer plays, remember we only have two hands and two feet, so you couldn't possibly have five notes being played at the same time. I personally don't worry about that though, I just want the groove to sound good. Hey, now that you know realistic drums programming, would you like to learn how to create amazing MIDI bass lines in just seven steps this video is for you.